Okay, Booker Tove. Today's staff is staff day five, um, and uh, it is also the 18th day in the Omer. We pick up in the middle of the Yom Zikaron, um, and um, we uh, we pick up in the middle of Dal Amud Bet, uh, where it says, if you look at Tosos Shkulinheim and go across from that Tosos in about three lines down, it says Ravina Ama. Okay, so we're in the middle of discussing how you know this idea that you require lechatchila to have the shema when you slaughter and do all the various avodot by kudshim, and then how do you we sort of established that the other day? Zeva hashamim, the zvicha should be l'shem shlamim, the slaughtering should be for the sake of the being shlamim, and then we sort of had other ways of expanding it to the other avodot, and then we wanted to say how do you know it has to be l'shem be'alim for the sake of the owners? So to some degree that answer was because it has it repeats this idea of zeva shlamim. So since it's redundant or zevach todach, whatever, todach shlamav. We say it's not only for the sake of the sacrifice, for the sake of the owners. The one plus look that we had that a little bit in it sort of like was more specific about the ideas of the owners was the pasuk about the vineyard solo lichaper alav. So the chaper alav, the kapara is with the dam, so that's about the zrika, but alav for the owner. And I should remind you um, that the idea that it has to be for the sake of the owner is uh, because the idea of this owner is really only specifically about who the kapara is for, um, and that's the zrika sadam, even when we say the other avodot have to be for the sake of the owner, what we mean is, is that when you shecht it, you have to, meaning also stama works, but the issue is having in mind when I'm shechting it, who am I planning on doing the Zrika Saddam for? On behalf of whom am I doing the Zrika Saddam? Ultimately, it's all rooted in the Zrika Saddam. If somebody shechs it and isn't thinking about the Zrika Saddam and is thinking about the wrong owner, it's not a problem. So there, it's important to remember that difference, that while all four of Vodot have to be the shame, the right korban, and again, when we're saying the shame, it really means it can't be actively for a different korban, that's the issue of Shama, whatever. But when we say it has to be for the sake of the right owner, we really only mean that the zrika has to be for the sake of the right owner. And if you're doing the shrita and the kabbalah, whatever, if, as long as you're, you know, there you could invalidate it if you're think, planning on how, who you're going to do the zrika for, for whom you're going to do the zrika. But the act intrinsically, there's not an issue of owners. Owners are rooted in the zrika saddam, chaper alav. Okay, so that's where we sort of were yesterday. Okay, so but now the Gemara has a question about how we know the other avodot, all right? And one of the ways it wanted to learn it out was sort of like a, from another pasuk at Ha'ayo Yaseh Zevach Shlamim LaHashem, and that's again it talks about Zevach Zvicha, but we want to sort of expand it to include all types of avodot. The Gemara had a problem that it was a prat of klal prat, and now we're going to see Ravina's answer. Ravina Amar after the word of prat LaOlam Dunin. Actually, Zevach Shlamim Lashem, you know, um, would have been a would have been a case of a klal prat. Excuse me, Yaase et Ayo Yaase Zevach Shlamim Lashem. So Yaase and Shlamim are like the klal, and Zevach is the prat. And we could have said that that was a klal prat and limited it to, to Zvicha. But Rolam Dunim the Lashem chose a klal. But it says when it says Yaase Zevach Shlamim Lashem, so Yaase is the klal. Any type of the avoda, zevach is the prat, zvicha, and lahashem is again seen as another klal, any type of avoda. So it's a klal, prat, klal, and that allows us to expand beyond zvicha to include the other avodas. Okay, Amalei Ravach Midi to the Ravina, Ravach Midi to said Ravina, Valu Dami Klal Akama Klal Abasra, but the Klalim are not the same. Why is that? Klal Akama Marba Asiyot. Ye ase, which is all the things that really are central in making it a korban, which are the classic four avodot, shechita, kabbalah, holacha, and zrika. Okay, so the ye ase would have included all the avodot, which is exactly where we want to get to. Okay, but that would, but but the end of the pasuk is one minute. Vesulo um, klal basra, nothing more. The last klal la hashem is kol la hashem. Would mean any part of the avodas a korban that is la hashem. It's not just the things that make it a korban. So what other avodot does that include? So even the stuff that after it's a kosher korban, you've already thrown the blood, there's still other things to be done, spilling out the remainder of the blood on the base, all burning the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the innards on the altar. Okay, so therefore it's not a classic cloth part of cloth. So again, what we're trying to do is know how do you know the other avodot have to be the shame Balim. So we have the puzzle of the Yirtza, Lo lechaper alav. So alav means be'alim. 
And lechaper is dam, is zrika sadam, okay, that's classically what lechaper is. So that's one puzzle, but that's zrika. How do you know the other things? Okay, so we have a puzzle about yeyaseh zevach shalamim lahashem. So that's extra, so we're going to interpret it for the Baalim. Zevach here is, okay, zricha, obviously, shrita. Okay. Okay, but we still don't know the other two are vodot. So we want to say klal pradu klal, klal pradu klal. And we're going to expand this idea of shrita to include other things. So yeyaseh is a klal, anything, and la Hashem is another klal for any type of avodah. Okay, but the problem is, is that yeyaseh is what makes it a korban, the four classic avodot, which is where we're trying to go to. But the act, la Hashem, anything you're doing la Hashem would include all the avodot. And therefore, even the stuff after it was a kosher korban, and therefore it's not a classic klal part of klal because the two klalim are not the same. That's the Gemara's question. Let's see what it says. Um, so the Gemara's answer is: Hi Tana de Rebbe Shmel. This is the Tana from the house of Rebbe Shmel. The klal uprati darish ki gavna that he does a klal uprata that type of a way. He doesn't matter. He doesn't. He's not so you know. Again, Rebbe Shmel is sort of deeper to klashim, but adam. He's a little looser. And he's willing to consider that a cloud proto cloud, even though the last cloud is a broader cloud than the first one. So what is the cloud proto cloud? So how are we going to get here to the other avodot? Let's take a look. Cloud proto cloud, yetadan el kena prat. It has to be similar to the particular one in the middle. Ma prat miforash avoda ubinin lishma. So the prat is zevach, is shrita. That's an avoda, and it needs to be lishma. Here we mean lishen bealim. Avkol avoda ubinin lishman. It's true by all the avodot. One minute, says the Gemara. You can't necessarily go from Shrita to all the Avodot, the four classic Avodot. I might say Shrita is, has a, a unique characteristic. Shrita is one of the four Avodot that you're chayv if you bring a korban outside the base of Mikdash. I'll expand it. Klaal Prada Klaal means expand, but it doesn't mean go overboard. So I'll expand it to other Avodot that are so powerful that even if you do them out of the, that, that those are the ones that are forbidden out of the base of Mikdash. What is that? Shrita Vizrika. Slaughtering and sprinkling of the blood or throwing of the blood. Those are the two. In, yes, Kabbalah Balach Allah. I'm not going to be able to expand that to get me to Kabbalah Malach. And by the way, we don't even need Zrita because we have Zrita from up here. So the Gemara says, even with your Klaal Prada Klaal, how do you get beyond Shrita and Zrika? If you, something similar to Shrita is Zrika, not necessarily the other two. So the Gemara says, Inami, or maybe I'll expand it but go in a different direction. Uh, but still not be all inclusive. Ma'apart miforash davar ton safon. Shechita is something that you have to do at the north of the mizbeach. Yesh no bechatos apnimios, and even in depends on what. Okay, fine, but it's sometimes, and even in inner chatos, you have to, even in chatos that the blood is sprinkled on the, the inside. Does it, right? In I understand. Yes, 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 yes. And even well, that's, okay. Anyway, and even, but it has that quality. And even for an inner chatos, a chatos that's blood is sprinkled on the in, in you know inside the uh, the uh, heichal, okay, um, you which is not zrika, it's sort of applied with the finger on the altar, on the inner altar, the incense altar, okay. So um, so so that doesn't have zrika, but what does? So, but so but shrita is always applied by all the korbanot. And it has this unique characteristic that sometimes it needs to be at the north of the altar. So I'll limit it to things that are like shrita. I'll include other things that sometimes demand north of the altar, north of the altar, and that uh, apply to the inner chataot. What are those? Shrita v'kabbalah. Everything you slaughter, everything, yeah, and you slaughter at the north of the, well, not everything on the north, but anyway, those that you slaughter at the north, you also c catch the blood at the north, okay, but the, the reason, but this excludes Zrika. Why does this exclude Zrika? Zrika isn't limited to the north of the Mizbeach, obviously, Zrika is like all around the Mizbeach and so on, and Zrika is not for the inner chataot. The inner chataot, the blood is placed with the finger on the incense altar. It's not Zrika. So if I'm going to expand Shrita, I could expand it two ways. I could expand it to include Zrika because of the principle of uh, yesh no bachutz, things that apply in the prohibition of shchutei chutz, or I could expand it to include Kabbalah because it has the similar characteristics of Tzafon, and chataot kliyot, okay, but that doesn't apply. But the, but 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 yes, no bechutz doesn't apply to Kabbalah. That's not prohibited outside the base of for korban or so you don't get cars or whatever. And the idea of doing it in the north and the inner chataot don't apply to zrika. 
So how do I know to have this expand to include everything? I could, based on which characteristic I emphasize, I could get a little bit of an expansion, but I'm not going to have it include all four of Odot. So the Gemara says, let's take a look. Um, so the Gemara's answer is, fine, you answered your question already. Since you can expand it either way, and there's no way to determine which way is the right way to go. So shkulimim. So they're both equivalent. We have Oshnam, and we'll go, we'll, we'll interpret it both ways. Since there's no way to say whether the logical expansion is in this way or in that direction, so that tells us that actually it should be interpret, expanded to include both. That's a type of a principle that one uses sometimes. Since you don't know which way to go, and they're both equivalent ways you could go with the drasha, the drasha applies equally to both. Well, then, now, the question is, what about, well, okay, the question is, what about halacha? Right, what about carrying the blood? And the answer is, halacha always is sort of the sort of like the, you know, the sort of like, like the, uh, the black sheep or whatever, you know, the one, anyway, the one that doesn't get enough tension. Anyway, so it's the, so, so uh, halacha gets wrapped up in Kabbalah. Okay, Kabbalah is assumed to include halacha, and therefore, since we've got that, we've now expanded it to include all the other ghosts with Shane Bali. Okay, Lishnachrin, another way, which is not another approach, but another way of, another terminology to use to this idea that they're equivalent and just include both, is So each one, which is another way of saying Shkulimim, each one, since you can go each way, each one, you know, gets established. We do it each way, we do both. Okay, Ibai Seima, now. Okay, so that's how we expand it to include all four. Ibai Seima, or I could say the following. Zrika mit Ravashi Nafka. We don't we would know not to do the Zrika approach, because Zrika we get from this pasta, So since we've already included Zrika, we obviously that's not where we should be expanding. We've already covered that. That tells us to expand, expand and include Kabbalah. And once we include Kabbalah, we also get Holaka. Okay, so the combination of these psukim, you get Zrika. You get shchita, and then because of klal part of klal, you expand it, and now you have all the avodot for l'shem ba'alim. Ashkechan el nazir. Okay, now this is the question that Michael asked, I think, at the beginning of yesterday when I was in here briefly, which is all of these drashot of l'shem, you know, for for the sake of the korban and for the sake of the owners, are all by shlamim cases. How do you know to expand it? Now, you could say shlamim is like the weakest of the korbanot. It's kach and kalim or whatever. Certainly would apply to the more weighty ones. But we will see that there's ways in which shlamim have more components and more demands. So it's not obvious you can go from shlamim to all the other korbanot. So let's take a look. So now we're not, so that's our next move, to not expand to the avodot. We've got the idea that all four avodot for lishma, all four of the avodot l'shem balim, although again, l'shem balim is a focus on the zrika. And now we want to know how to apply it beyond the korban that we started with. I think someone else asked that question. I'm not answering it. Okay. <laughs> All right, good. Ashkan, sorry if I stole somebody else's question. Ashkan El Nazir. That is the El Nazir. This, anyway, all of this, this just starts with Yel Nazir. How do you go to the other Shlomim? I even get to Shlomim in general. So, let's apply it from El Nazir. No, El Nazir. El Nazir comes with an Ola and a Chatas. So, maybe there are particular heavy requirements by that. So, no. Okay, which is a funny thing because the word is Shlamim. But Zevach Shlamim, why don't you just say Zevach Shlamim? It's shlamim or whatever. So what my shlamim? Why in the plural? The rabbis call us shlamim. All shlamim have this requirement. Fine. Okay. So all these requirements are by shlamim in general. But still, how do you get by shlamim to all the other korbanot? Ashkin shlamim sharkol kachim minal. And how do you know the other kachim? So the Gemara says v'chi teimane lifni shlamim. Let's apply from shlamim, which makes sense. Shlamim is like at the bottom of the level of hierarchy of korbanot. No, Malish Shlomim came to him smicha and a sachem et tenufa chazav ashok. Shlomim have a lot of things you do, extra components. Okay, you put your hands on the korban. That's smicha on the head of the korban. Okay, um, you bring the flour and the wine together with it, um, and the or you you wait. You know, you do a waving of, of the and a waving of the breast and of the thigh. So you don't do all three of those with any other korban. A lot of korban, most korbanot, basically, almost all korbanot, you do smicha, the hands on the head, with the exception of like Bechor, Maser, Pesach. Okay, so smicha, fine, is pretty much by all korbanot. But the nesachim is only by a korban that is basically a free will korban, a shlamim or an ola. You do not bring the nesachim by a chatas and an asham. Okay, and the waving of the chazev shok, that's only the shlamim. 
So the Shlamim is certainly the only one that has all of these components, okay? So now the Gemara says, so maybe that's why it has the Lushma requirement. El Amakra, ah, here's how we get, once you get it for one Korban, we're going to be able to expand it. Zo satora lola velamincha velachatas velasham velamilu imu vezevach hashelami. This is the law, and it lists all the korbanot: the ola, the mincha, the chatas, the asham, and the zevach shlamim, the miluim, which is not the torah. He keeps on because it was shlamim. Everything is connected to the shlamim. It works well here because shlamim is at the end. So that actually emphasizes an idea that we're taking shlamim and expanding it to everything else. Okay, ma shlamim bein sheno bein sheno kodesh bein sheno bailing bein lishma. The same way kodeshim shlamim. There's an issue of doing it lishen bailing and lishen the right korban. Of course, bein sheno kodesh bein sheno bailing bein lishma. Okay, fine. That's how we know it. So now that was sort of like the end of yesterday. We have psukim that tell me you need it to be l'shem korban, l'shem balim. Um, again, stam also works, and it's basically by shlamim, and we've expanded it to all the korbanot. So now we've established point number one that you need l'shma. Now we have to point, move on to point number two. What happens when you don't have l'shma? The, the mission tells you, other than a chatas and a pesach, the korban is kosher, but it doesn't count for the owners. Where do you know that idea? How do you move on to that idea? So that's the next thing. That's what we're going to focus on today. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, so the Gemara says like this. Um, Ema, now why don't I say, four lines from the bottom, um, If you need Lishma, when you do it Shalom Lishma, it should be invalid. Now before we go on, I want to say an important point, which is that, um, uh, which is that, uh, Jenna, um, our guest here, I'm sorry, remind me your name again? Right. Fred was you. using your Gemara, so it's, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to bring up, if you can find, yeah, I mean, that'd be great. I haven't brought him yeah, up. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give you this. It'll open, the, it'll open the door at the other end. Okay, I'll tell you the code off now. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, okay, so... Um, Okay, so first of all, here's an important principle. The important principle is, is that by Kachim, normally if the Torah says you need something, if you don't have it, it's invalid. The Torah says, I don't know, by a Lula, it has to be, or an Esra, creates Hadar. So if it's not Hadar, if it's not beautiful, it's puzzle. Okay? It has Arve Nachal, and we learn now, you know, the question about, uh, you know, we learn out certain things, and if it doesn't have those criteria, it's puzzle. Like, whenever we learn a, a requirement in the Torah, we assume if the thing doesn't have that requirement, it's invalid. Okay? Um, so, by Kachim, it's because there are, I, this is my interpretation of it. Well, I'll tell you by the rule. The rule is, something is not, a requirement is not assumed, the, the absence of satisfying a requirement by Kachim is not assumed to make the thing invalid unless the Torah repeats the requirement twice, until it's Shina Allah HaKasav La'akim. Okay, my interpretation of that is that since there are Shina Allah HaKatuv La'akim, it has to repeat it twice in order to say that without doing that requirement, it's invalid. Again, we never say this by anything else, right? Fill in. You know, if you had three partios, it's invalid. It doesn't have to say that twice, okay? But because by culture, my read is, since there are so many requirements, okay, the presumption is that there are not all ma'ake, and that the Torah has to say it twice to tell you that it is. So the question you is... Say that. Right, I, I, I did say that again. Right, exactly. So anyway, so good. So the point is, Gemara says, well, if it's not lishma, it should be invalid. So why does the Gemara assume if it's not lishma it should be invalid, even if it's a requirement? So I just I would I just want to show you that Tosos asked that question. If you look at the Tosos, every place when we're dealing with kachim, excuse me, we require by kachim shina la It has to repeat it to tell you that if you don't do it, it's invalid. shina. It didn't repeat it. So why is the Gemara asking? Oh, it should be invalid if you don't do lishma. So I wanted you more to see the question. We'll do one part of the answer. Okay, by the idea of doing it with shame, the korban, there were multiple psukim about that. And therefore the Gemara is saying, maybe if you don't do it, it should be invalid. So whatever the answer is, I wanted you to be aware of this principle, that just because you require something by a korban, the actual initial assumption is it's not ma'akev, unless the tar- it's repeated twice. But anyway, here's the Gemara's question. Okay, Ema, why did we say, four lines from the bottom, if it's shachit shalolishma, it should be invalid. 
So I'm not cross. So how do you know Shalom Lishma B'Diavid is okay? But it doesn't work for the owners. That's like part two of the question. How do you know it's okay? And then how do you know, but it still doesn't, is it Ola for the sake of the owners? So Amr Kra, the verse says, We had this at the beginning of the, of, the, of, the, of the first staff. What comes out of your mouth, you should observe. Kashir Nadarta, like you vowed, like to God, a Nidava. So Kamar says, what do you mean a nedava? You called it a neder. Hi nedava, neder who? Again, neder is when you say it's my obligation. Nedava is when you just sanctify the animal. So what's the pasuk equating them? Ella, here's how to read the pasuk. In kamash and adarta sita, if it's kashir and adarta, if you did it exactly as you vowed, you said to bring an ola and all the avot were done for the sake of an ola, then you hey neder. Then it counts as a neder and you satisfy your obligation. In love, but if you did it... Un- in a different way than you vowed, you said you were going to make an ola, and then you sanctified it as an ola, but the, you shechted it for, for a shlomim, let's say, or you threw the blood for a shlomim, so it wasn't exactly as the sanctity dictated, then Yehei it still good, counts as a korban, it's like, but it's, it's like you sanctify the animal, but it doesn't count as a neder, it doesn't count to satisfy your personal obligation. Again, a neder is when you accept on yourself a personal obligation. So that's the puzzle that we learned, that you can have a korban, that because you didn't do it the right way, it's not a shir nadarta, somehow it's, you, you know, which we're reading, not just, I don't know, that you somehow did one of the avodas physically wrong, but somehow for the wrong sake, then therefore it counts as a nedava. It still is a legitimate korban, but it does not work for the owners. Okay, so that's how we learn out that double stake. It still works, but it doesn't work for the owners. It works as an adava. One minute. The itrich motzas fatecha. You need the pasuk of motzas fatecha to tell you that it. What happens when it's not done right? That it's in this like, it's it's in this middle stage. The itrich zotatara. You need the zotatara. This is pretty obvious. Because of Rahman Motsai, but they just said this idea that if something's not right, it's in this like middle stage. Well, yeah, but my cause of Rahmana, I wouldn't know what criteria, what problem it's talking about. What types of things have to be done? And if they're not done right, they're in this middle stage. So so cause so the my. I'm sorry, I wouldn't have known the my. What's it talking about? Cause of Rahmana, Zosatora. It says those that are all the level. I mean, God to tell you, those special requirements by Shlomim, that all of this Lishma that we've learned by Shlomim, that applies okay, but by all. You don't have to have Lishma. No, Lishma. Okay, okay. Those demands that by Shlomim, it all means Lishma. So, you know, those that are you when you need it by all Korbanos. So that obviously you needed the Zos HaTorah to tell you the demand of Lishma by all Korbanos. The Ikaz of Rahman is Zos HaTorah. Now, if it had just said that, Havi Amina Lif Sulu. So then I would have said, okay, if you don't have Lishma, it's invalid. Okay, that's pretty obvious. Okay, we learn out from Shlomim all the Lishma requirements. Zos HaTorah, we learn out, we learn out that those Lishma requirements apply to all Korbanot. And then the third pasuk, the kicker is, right, um, that if you don't do it correctly, it still is a kosher korban, it's an edava, but it's an edava, meaning it's not a neder. So you, it was not ola lebalim l'shem chobet. So the combination of those three get us, get us where we want. Okay, by the shlomim, we have multiple psukim that tell us lishma. Then we have, then we have zotat torah, and Lishma and Lashem Balin. Oops, Balin. Then we have Zodha Torah, which tells us all Korbanot. All Korbanot. That's Pasuk number two, or whatever group. I mean, this is a group of Sukim. Okay. And then number three is Motsa um, Svatecha, which tells you that it is Kasher. Hello, Alu Lubao. It's because the combination of these three tell us the principles of our mission. Okay. But if we had a yes. puzzle that says those are and says that everything is, is together, but then we say it, it's different, that Chata is a different. Okay, that's we're going to have to learn that. How do you know Chata says a special halacha? It still is true that it has the requirement of the Shema. This is telling you that they all come out require the Shema, that the Shema here is required by all Kormanat. Okay, all right. Now let's go on. Today's daf, daf. All right, <laughs> and this is going to be, to some degree. Look, we're in an area. I mean, the, the, just not to scare you off. The, the the Gemara will move beyond all these psukim. Okay, we're in the we're in like in the in the forest of the psukim right now. We will move behind it. But today's daf, the, the remainder of daf or whatever daf will have psukim. But at least we we're going to start right now with an important conceptual question, which is. Where do you get this idea that something can count as a korban, 
but not count with Shane Bali. Like maybe such an animal doesn't exist, you know, right? Either it's a good korban, that means it works for the owners, or if it's not going to work for the owners, maybe it's totally a puzzle korban. How do you know that you can have, I mean, yes, you Which have what you would have thought, actually. Right, but, th- but conceptually, where do you get this from? So that's what the where is now going to shift to. Okay, and it starts with a great little visual, a great little uh, visual story. Okay, it says like this. Rami wish lakish. So normally when you say Rami, it means you're going to throw two, you know, bright does together and show a contradiction. Okay, but here Rish Lakish is not throwing two Tanakhic sources. Rami Rish Lakish al Maoi, he threw himself on his stomach, okay, and Bay Midraja in the base matters, he threw himself on the floor of the base matters. It's almost like a kid having a tantrum. You know, you throw yourself on the ground, okay, Umakshi. And this is his question, okay? So his question is it's almost like the problem is a conceptual one. It's not throwing two different sources together. It's, you know, logically trying to work them together. And here's what's bothering him. I mean, I get, I, Mark never does anything with what, what with that image. There he is on the floor of the base medrash, and he's asking this question. It, it, okay. He, he regularly does that. There's an explanation. Yeah, there's other places where right. he does that. Does it say anything interesting about that? Uh, no. They just, no, they just uh, refer to Karen Oro, but it has uh, further explanation. Okay. Anyway, I well, so why, why he does that. right. I think I, I would like to interpret at least here. I have to check the other places that the Rummy is not a contradiction of texts. It's a logical problem that's sort of bothering me. He's throwing himself on the floor. But anyway, Umaki, he asked the following question: In Kshirimain, Yirtsu, if they are kosher then they should work for the owners. It should be like all or nothing. Okay, if and if they're not going to work for the owners, so lama boing, why do they come at all? Like either they're all, the whole package or not the whole package. I'm a little rebel lozer, so rebel lozer said to him, it's not an unusual phenomenon. I'll give you another case where you have a korban that worked, that is a kosher as a korban, the blood could be thrown, the meat could be eaten and so on. It could be offered on the Mizbeach. But it doesn't help the owners. What would be a case like that? The owners are dead. Okay? Somebody sanctified an Ola and dropped dead. What do you do? You bring the Ola, even though the person is dead. How many okay? know it doesn't help with some sort yeah. of mystery? All right, so fine. We're gonna assume that. We can worry about that later. Did not Umesa. Now actually this works this week's parsha is uh is Tazria, a woman who has a who gives childbirth and then you have to bring a korban. So we're talking here about the chatas that a woman would bring after childbirth. Okay, so she brought her chattas, because a chattas you can't bring after death. Okay, and then she dies. But the thing is, she doesn't just bring a chattas. Okay, she also brings a ola. So, now she died. Her heirs will, should bring her ola. If she had designated okay? one. If she had sanctified it. Okay, if she had sanctified She didn't sanctify it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, she brought her Ola before the Chattas, and she sanctified the Chattas. They don't bring the Chattas. Chattas Lachar Nisa is the principle that you basically let it die, okay? But an Ola, she sanctified an Ola, she died. Now, it could be anybody sanctified an Ola, but this is the scenario that they, that we're starting with. This is a Mishnah, and it's brought, even though the owners are dead, okay? So, so look, the phenomenon exists. What's bothering you? You could have an animal that is sanctified, that is somehow detached from the owners and still operates as an anim- as a sacrifice. It says it doesn't brought. bother him also. Okay, well, let's take a look. Right. But there's a note uh, saying also that the death was a greater atonement, so they didn't need this. That might be, but right. anyway, I'm not, that could be. So but I, I, general, I, so all right, I don't want to get into Can we that. generalize then? I mean, no, no, I, that, that's distracting. Okay. Let's bracket okay. that, okay? Yeah. I'm going to lay, I, at this stage, I think the Gemara is basically just assuming that it doesn't make sense to speak about an atonement for someone who's dead. I'm going to introduce that that whole idea. Okay. Amalei, Fine. You know what? I'll concede the point. In the case of an Ola, case of a Shlomim, that those come and those work for the Baal, those work but not don't work for the Baalim. Anything that's a free will, by the way, both because of this Lachar Misa point, or you could also say, look, if I make a Nedava, I sanctify this animal as an Ola, I sanctify this animal as a Shlomim, okay? It doesn't satisfy personal obligation I have. I don't have a personal obligation. But you could still say, even if it doesn't satisfy personal obligation, it still is counted. I get brownie points up in heaven. No, it still somehow is Machaper, counts to my merit. Okay, but at least those things are less connected to the owners by necessity because they're not coming in the context of an obligation. And the Lachar Misa allows them to happen even after. Let's say somebody sanctifies a Shlomim and drops dead. You'll bring the Shlomim. Okay, so when Shoki says, you know what, there I agree. That phenomenon is possible, the Korban without the owner. Okay, but what bothers me is the idea of an Asham. 
because an asham is all about sin, right? A chatas, because it's all about sin, it, you don't get to bring it if it's, it doesn't work. If it's l'shem, but if it, you know, if you do, if you do a shalom l'shma, it's invalid. So the one that stands out, it works by Ola and Shlomim. Those can work without an owner. It, by Chattas, we know that if Shaloli Shema, because it doesn't connect to the owner, it's invalid. The standout is Asham. Asham requires a connection to the owner normally, you would assume. If somebody sanctifies an Asham and dies, you do not bring the Asham La'achar Misa. An Asham does not work without a connection to the owner in general, okay? And nevertheless, here, the Asham will be valid, but it won't work for the owner. So that, Rachel Akish is saying, doesn't make conceptually any so he, sense. So that's what our letter says. So that's what the answer is going to be back. Let's take a look. Okay, he says, I'll concede the point of an Ola, the Asilach or Misa. Asham, but an Asham, the law Asilach or Misa, somebody sanctifies an Asham and dies. Minala, where do you have an idea that that could at all ever work without being connected to the owners? Look, you're right. That, that dissenting opinion that you're expressing is right there in the Mishnah. Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Afa Asham, Rabbi Eliezer says, and Asham's also invalid. So your thinking is just like Rabbi Eliezer's thinking. So there you go. Now get up off the floor. So Amar, <laughs> so, he said, so he said to this Rebbe Lazar, let's not get confused, it's Rabbi Eliezer in the mission, Rebbe Lazar, the Amor, who's answering him. Amar, so he said about this Rebbe Lazar, Zo Shaomi Malavadam Kadalu, this is the person that people are talking about. He's such a big Talmud Chacham, this Rebbe Lazar, who thinks he's answering my problem. Kamiya on a Mishnah Shleim, I'm bothered with the Stam Mishnah. With the with the halacha as we pass in it, okay, and it, I'm saying it doesn't make any sense. But I'm at least, oh, Rebbe Lezer, Rebbe Lezer. Oh, okay, fine. You know your problem is Rebbe Lezer's problem. I don't care that it's Rebbe Lezer's problem. I care about the halacha. The halacha rejects Rebbe Lezer. Okay, so what sense does it make that you can have an asham that works without being connected to the owner? El Amarish Lakish, sorry, Felix Lakish did not get any satisfying answer. So he said, Eftachana Pitchul in Afshai. You know what? Nobody's here to help me. I'll open the door for myself. Okay? What door am I going to open for myself? Motzas Fasecha. Hai Nidava Nederu Kidlael. We get this idea that it could exist in a middle state from this, in what Kasher Nadato, Shemla Kachan Nidava, that something could function like a Nidava. In the sense that you know that you started it off, it was connected to the owner, it was a neder, but in the end, because it wasn't done properly, it worked even though it wasn't connected to the owner, like a nedava. Now, the interesting thing is, I don't understand. Didn't he read the earlier Gemara? So Rashi basically says, no, they had not yet figured out this basis. And if you look at the earlier Gemara that quoted this pasuk, it was and made this drasha, it was quoted by the stam of the Gemara. It wasn't attributed to anybody. So probably historically, what happened was is that this story came first. Rabbi Shlokish came up with his Pasuk. Once this Pasuk was said, ah, oh, that's a great Pasuk now to establish this idea, the Gemara brought it in for, you know, earlier already twice. But when you read it, you say, oh, what's the matter, Shlokish? You know, you should have known the answer. But the reality is he, he's the one that figured out the answer. And then the Gemara incorporated it, okay? So that Pasuk, it seems, was the read of that Pasuk that way comes from Rabbi Shlokish, okay? And that's how you know that even though normally we don't have something like an asham that can exist without an owner. Here you can have an asham without an owner. Okay, so let's see. But the Gemara is not done. Okay. So Rebbe Yitzchak Rebbe Yitzchak Bar Abba was sitting. Yossi and Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Abba was with him. Yossi and Rabbi they were sitting and saying, Rabbi was bothered with the story about the asham, that it couldn't come after death. And that for him said, so therefore, how can you have it? Shalom Lishma. And he learned it out from the Talmud. Here doesn't mean the Talmud. The Talmud means he made his derivation from the pasuk of Motzas Fasecha. Okay, so that's what he. That's the story. So Ema Habad Ben Eder Ben Dava Leisu Velalirtsu Asham Lo Leisi Klal. He says, you know what, Reish Lakish, I'm sorry, your pasuk didn't solve your problem because the pasuk is talking about Neder versus Nidava. That is in the world of Olin Shlomin, where you can have a Neder and you can have a Nidava. And there you could say something could sort of like switch. It could start as a personal obligation and then exist as a korban without connected to the person. Okay? But that's in a world of nedr and nedava, in a world of olan shlumming, where those can come through a nedr and nedava. But an asham, which only comes through an obligation that the Torah puts on you, isn't in that world of nedr and nedava. Your problem still exists. How do you know you can have this middle state? Okay? It was a great pasuk, but if you're bothered with the fact that asham is different, then, it, then you still got your problem. How do you know to apply this pasuk to the case of an asham? Okay, asham lo leisi klal. 
So that's a good question. So Armadu Avayi, so Avayi said back, Fine, you know what? He didn't get it from the Pasuk of Motsas Vasecha. He actually got it from a different Pasuk. Vishachat Ota Lechatas. You should slaughter it, the Chatas, for the sake of a Chatas. So this answers the question about how you know Chatas, Shelo Lishma, doesn't work. Osa Lishma Kshera, Shelo Lishma Psula. Osa means it. It has to be Lichatas. So Lichatas is telling you Lishma, and Osa is telling you that this requirement of Lishma is unique to a Chatas. Now we know that the requirement of Lishma is not unique to a Chatas. All the Korban. Well, then- so the, what it's telling you must be unique is that it's, it, the evidence it doesn't work. That even if you don't do it, be the ever the korban is invalid. That's the osa. The chatas is lishma, and there's something that's unique to a chatas. That be the ever the korban is invalid if it's done shalom lishma. And what? No, and now, okay, we'll worry about that. But now the same pasuk that you learned that it's ma'ake by a chatas tells you this is only a halacha by chatas. Tells you that it works by an asha. Now we have not so conceptually explained the idea that what does it mean for an asha to be unrelated to the owner. But at least we're saying we have a pasuk to base it on. Okay, we're not just making it up. We needed a pasuk to ground it because it's a new idea. We can't say it without it being grounded and learned from a pasuk. Okay, one minute. Let me just finish it. Oso lishmak sheish shelo lishma psula. Only by the chatos do we say that in, if it's not done shelo lishma tzibale hashar kachim all other korshim shelo lishma kshevim shelo lishma arkasher and that would include an asha. Okay, now. So from there we get the idea that it's kosher shalom Now the only question I have left is yocho yeratsu. Maybe if it's kosher, maybe it should even count for the sake of the owners. Okay, that's sort of the other logic. Fine, you want to say it's kosher, let it be kosher. Let it count for the owners. No. <laughs> so that's what the motzas fasecha teaches you, that it doesn't count for the owners. Okay, so we still not haven't have we still haven't really answered our question, right? Because Ota Lichatat tells you, okay, tells you Khatas, it's Lishma is Ma'akev, and everything else, all else, which includes Asham, okay, Lishma, Shalo Lishma, it's still Kasher. Okay, so that's how you know that even an Asham can be kosher shalom lishma and whites of Tanachatas. But then the question is, maybe it's kosher and it should count. So, you know, and it should even be maratza. So then we have to go back to the Pasuk of Ha'asher Nadarta Nidava. You know, that this Nadarta Nidava tells you it's a middle state, that it's kosher the Eno Ole. Okay, now the problem that we said is that this these words are talking in a context of Ola and Shlomim, in a context of things that work with Neder and Nedava. So now we're going to sort of have to combine these two things and say the logic is the following. If an Asham is kosher, okay, if, if an Ola and a Shlomim are, not, are, are, kosher, are kosher and not Ola, what are you going to say? But an Asham is kosher and it is Ola, it does count? I mean, an Asham is more problematic when it's not attached to the owners. So if even an Ola and a Shlomim aren't going to count for their owners. Certainly a chatos won't count for the owners. That's how we're going to combine it. Okay, but let's, but the Gemara is not going to be satisfied. Let's take a look. Okay, I'm not forgetting about you, David. No okay, so it says like this. It says, okay, so the Gemara says, I'm still not satisfied. I can say, is an asham or a weighty? Yes, but an asham is something that only makes sense connected to the owners. So I am still going to tell you, you cannot use this pasuk for an asham. You're telling me, oh, but an asham's already kosher. I know from this pasuk an asham is kosher. So what are you going to tell me? That an ola doesn't count for the owners and an asham does? And the answer is, yes, I am going to tell you that. Because an ola is not tightly connected to the owners. So even if you say it's kosher, I can live with the idea that it doesn't work for the owners. But if you're going to tell me an asham is kosher, and I'm going to tell you the only way an asham is going to be kosher is if it counts for the owners. And you, this pasuk is not going to help you. This pasuk works in a world of Ola and Shlomim, of Neder and Dava. I am still going to insist by an asham, it's all or nothing. It's one package. Okay? So you still have not proven your point. So the Gemara says, okay. Ma'ala Ola, to one of the couple, I'm sorry. 
Amar Bay, Ashram de Mirzi Lo Matisamis. No, here's why you can't say that once we've established from Pasuk number one, O Salah that an Ashram works, here's how you can, here's how I'm going to tell you that that it can, you cannot say that it's Miratse. Why not? Okay. Ashram de Mirzi Lo Matisamis. Kav Chomer Mi Ola. Because, again, I'll make the Kav Chomer. Ma Ola, Sheena Machapera, Sheena Miratse, an Ola which doesn't serve. To, now, so he's not, here's the logic is not that an Ola is weaker. The uh, logic is the following. An Ola normally never brings atonement. Now, is it really true it doesn't bring atonement? Actually, an Ola brings atonement. We normally say, I mean, the Pesuk can just talk about an Ola as a gift. Okay, but the Chazal say that an Ola works to atone for the things that um, other Korbanos don't work for, which basically is an Asay. This is a say that you didn't do, or a lota say that it's combined to an assay or whatever. The thing, though, that we're going to say is that that's maybe a normal ola, but an ola that a woman brings as a for for childbirth is part of the process of tahara for childbirth and is not connected to ritzoy and to kapara. But we'll get to that in a minute. So it says like this: Here's going to be the argument. The argument is not going to be, oh, if a weak ola doesn't count for a for for the owners, how do you expect a weighty ashram to count for the owners? That's not the argument. The argument is going to be an ola in general does not work to achieve kapara. It's not normally its function. And therefore, and when it's shaloli shema, it also doesn't work to achieve kapara. Like, it doesn't work for the owners, okay? Therefore, an asham, which is, well, let's let's finish it, okay? So here's the guy. Here's the kavacham. What's a kavacham? Ma ola she'enam echaperes. Nola normally doesn't serve the function of kapara. Enam eratzeh. And we say that somehow, you know, it doesn't count for the owners. Now, counting for the owners can mean more than just whether it achieves atonement. Like if the owners made a net yeah, there, exactly like the Gemara said, they didn't satisfy their obligation of a net there. Okay? So, Asham Shemachaper, an Asham is normally its function is, is to bring Kapara. So, and here it's done wrong. Eno Zin Leinu Maratza, Sheinu Maratza. Certainly it should not be Maratza. Now, um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how the Kabbalah Homer works. Because it's still the logic the Gemara said before is that, well, let's still say that an Asham is like an all or a nothing. But I guess it's it's going beyond the all or the nothing argument. And it's basically saying, like, if its whole function. The, yeah. the, 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 the direct connection between the person bringing the Korban and, and, and the purpose of the Korban, right? Ola has no Kapara aspect. Therefore, it, it would make sense that it, it wouldn't be. If an Ola that has no right, kapara that, for a reason isn't Miratza when it's not Lishma, it, can't, it wouldn't make sense for an Asham that doesn't have any kapara reason to be Miratza Lishma. Asham seems to be more personally connected to the person. Being yeah, but that's a, sort of a bias, but, but that was the point. You're right. It shouldn't be in a middle position. So therefore, because it's all connected, it should be that it's mechaper, it, 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 it's, it's it kosher can't, and mechaper. Yeah, so, can't, but it, so we're shifting from psukim to logic. Right. Psukim, you could say that, but in logic, um, it, 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 if, if we see that even korbanot that don't have a direct connection to the person can't be mechap, can't, can't fulfill their purpose, right. can't be miratze, a korban that has a direct connection because it needs to be mechaper cannot be miratze when there's no lishma. So it just doesn't make. <laughs> yeah, it's still a little begs the question. It's still like a little bit that you have to assume that it's like yeah. I'm still I, I'm still a little bothered because what bothered the gemara until this point was how do you know that you can. Like that, the ashram can work without connection to the person. Um, oh, the question was, yeah, Jen, what, what do you want? Logic say? wise, I would almost think the opposite, right? That well, that's like, what the Gemara has been saying. Like, yeah, that how do you know like, that, that if it's kosher, maybe the only way for an ashram to be kosher is for it to be for it to be miratze, because an ashram doesn't, you know, only works together with. I, I'm, I'm, anyway, I think the answer is is that it basically, yeah, it is ignoring that sense that like it all has to come as a package. And if you ignore that sense that it comes as a package and it just focuses on the power to be miratze, so uh, you know, so then it sort of you know. It just reminds the fact that we said before that it should be miratze. I, I know, but the problem is that Abayi's point was. That it should all come as a package. Anyway, let's keep on reading, okay? So the Gemara understands it's some kavachomer. So the kavachomer is mal ola shekin kalil. No, maybe an ola is because it's all burned up. That's why it's a, a weightier type of a thing. And a chatos, which is somehow, or an asham, which is somehow less weighty, maybe it actually can be meratzeh. Shlomim yochichu. Okay, but shlomim are also not meratzeh. So if an ola is not meratzeh, and a shlomim is not meratzeh, an asham also shouldn't be meratzeh. 
No. Ma'u shlamim shekein tunim nesachim tenufa v'chaz v'shok. Shlamim have a greater weightiness in these other things that are brought with them. So just because Ola and Shlamim are not v'ratza doesn't prove that an Asham is not v'ratza. Ola tochiyach. Okay, but that's not, but those are not the things that an Ola has. V'chaz are din. And you go back and forth. Like, you know, don't point out, oh, Ola's weightier this way, Shlamim's weightier this way. We have to look for the common denominator. Lo rei zek rei zeh, lo rei zek rei zeh. Each one's distinctive characteristics are not like the others. Hatzad ha-shav ha-shabahen, the common denominator is, shein kagshim, that they're korbanos, v'shachton shalol ishman k'shevim, and shalol ishman their k'shevim, v'ein amaratsim. So that's the common denominator by everything else, by ol and shlamim. So avani avi ha-shem shu kodesh shachato shalol ishman k'shevim. I'll say the same is true by an ashem. So it's pretty much saying the same thing. Let's learn it out from the others. Again, I still don't understand how it answers Abaye's conceptual question. But anyway, if the other things are not meratsa, the ashem should not be meratsa. V'ein amaratsim. No? No, an Ola and a Shlomim can exist as a Korban Sibor. Uh, um, you know, an Asham never exists as a Korban Sibor. So therefore, since it's not exactly like there's something that makes it distinct, you can't apply the rule of Ola and Shlomim to an Asham. No, Toda Tochia. Ah, but a Toda also can't exist as a Korban Sibor. And they are the same principle of Eina Maratz applies by a Toda. No, but a toda is weightier because it demands the, the a toda of a cor, uh, you know a toda you bring the loaves of bread with it. But that's not unique by Olin Shlomin. So each one has its unique things. It's sort of like a Venn diagram, right? You have right, you have like right, you've got Ola, Shlomin, and Toda. And each one has some unique things. An Oda has, Toda has bread, which you don't have by the others. Ola is Khalil, it's all burnt up, which you don't have by the others. This has Chazev Vishok, which you don't have by the others. So since none of these exist by the others, you can't say that's the determining factor. The intersection of all of these is, you know, they're all Korbanos. So the rule is, any Korban that is, you know, it, the, the halacha should be that it is Ola ve'ena maratza. You know, it's kasher ve'ena maratza. And therefore, through the intersection of this, we're going to come ahead and include also, what do you call it, also the asham. Again, ignoring the fact that by the asham, it is more tightly connected to the owner. Okay? Lo rezek rezeh, lo rezek rezeh, hatzad ha-shavr shavr and the common denominator, shin kachim v'shachim shavr kasher ve'ena maratza, avani avi asham shu kodesh v'shato shalol shavr kasher ve'ena maratza. Okay, so I'm going to include it because I'm going to say I'm going to learn out of pencil here. And again, ignore the fact that all of these can exist even when the owner is dead, and all of these have a unique connection to the owner. So the Gemara says, no. So finally, now the Gemara gets back essentially to Abai's question, okay? So the Gemara says, um, but these are all similar, going back to essentially what was Abai's question before, that these all are from a world of neder and nedava, and not from a world of obligation, and they're all from a world in which korbanot can exist with a less tight connection to the owner. So we are really back to our earlier yeah, answer this already. We know we did not answer. Zot That's why we, we were a, pausing before. We have a whole. We, we, Torah. Whatever we have. Ella Rava. Okay, that we haven't said it yet in this case. So you've anticipated the next line of the Gemara. Ella Amarava Zos Hatorah. Okay, that we haven't said that yet. We said Zos Hatorah over here to tell you you need Lishma. Now we're going to say Zos Torah to tell you this principle mm-hmm. of we're going to introduce Zos Torah here as well. Zos Torah to tell me. That even though this is by Neder and Nedava, okay, Zota Torah is going to tell me plus Hashem. Okay. Well, the only problem is it includes Chatat in there okay, also. We'll get to that. Okay, yes, you're right. This high, whole idea of this uh, of this middle status makes more sense by Neder and Nedava. Zota Torah is going to let me now include Hashem. Okay. Uh, Okay, my chazi is now who's asked Michael's question. The akshis with shlamim, you connected it to a shlamim to say that it has this middle status. Akish lechatas, connected to a chatas, and say that it's connected to a chatas and it's eno, it's eno kasher. Hamiyat rachmana osa. No, because osa up here tells me that the only thing that has this halacha that is not kosher at all is a chatas. So since I can't connect it to a chatas, I'm forced to connect it to 
the nether, nidav, etc., which tells me a middle state. And I don't have the third option. There are three options. Not kasher at all, kasher vena meratze, kasher meratze. Our argument had been, let's say kasher meratze by Nashim, because it's so tightly connected. So the point is, no, it has to connect either to a shlomim or to a chatas. It can't connect to a chatas. A chatas is the only thing that's possible. So it has to connect to the a category of Ola and Shlomim to tell me it's in this middle status of Kasher Vein. So what's the Chata doing in the Pasuk of Zotah? I don't know. For, for this halacha, that's what Chatzli requires. Okay. So now the Gemara says like this. Hooray! So we got two then. Yosef Rav Huna Rav Nachman, Yosef Rav Sheshit Kabayev, Yosef Rav Kamri, they were all sitting and saying, Kasher Vein Reish Lakish, similar scenario. Three rabbis sitting and reflecting on Reish Lakish, just throwing himself on the floor. You know, I guess he captured their attention. The rabbi throws himself on the floor. Okay. Yeah, he says, Kasher Vein Reish Lakish, Reish Lakish was bothered to Asham, Dilo Asi Lacher Misa. Asham doesn't happen, Lacher Misa. So how could it have this middle state of Kasher Vein Amaratse? Lamele Rebbe Lezer, Rebbe Lezer, who tried to answer back Reish Lakish. And he's let him say, Asham Nami Asur Lachar Misa. Rebbe Lezer wanted to bring a proof from, like, you know, the Korbanot that came Achar Misa. And Rebbe said, what about Asham? He should have said, there's a type of an Asham that does come Lachar Misa. What type of Asham comes Lachar Misa? Le male, uh, so le male, uh, now what does that mean? So an Asham, so the Mark doesn't say, but it, it's implied, and it'll say it in a minute. If the person dies and leaves behind the Chatas, what do you do? You let the Chatas die. If the person dies and leaves behind an Asham, do you know what you do? You well, we say you bring in lachar mitzvah. No, no, no. What do, you, what, what do you do? Uh, don't don't focus on the words of Mar just said. What do you do by an ashram that the owners died? You let it graze till it you gets a mula. You, you transfer you, the you, money to you transfer the kedusha to money. You use the money to buy an ola. So the kedusha of the chat of an ashram lachar misa is ultimately realized by being brought on the mizbeach in the form of an ola. So therefore, you could have still said, you know what, Asham is not 100% like a Chathas. In some new reincarnated form, it's Neshama goes to the money, and then there's a Gilgul Neshama, and it goes to the Ola. In some reincarnated form, the Asham is comes Lachar Misa as an Ola on the Mizbeah. And that's why Asham, we can allow for it to have the status of being brought without connecting to the owners. Okay? I'm really Rav Shesha, so Shesha said, Asham lemai karev. In what sense is an Arsham brought on the Mizbeach Achar Misa? Lemosaro, for the remainder, meaning the, the, the what was left over, the money is transferred, and the transfer of the money is used to bring a, a bring, bring an Ola. That's what the word Mosar means, okay? It's, it can sometimes mean excess funds, but anyway, here that's what it means. So Chatas Nami Mikrov Karva Mosara. So one minute, this also applies by a Chatas. Now, what does it mean it applies by a chatas? So, uh, let me just sort of uh, check Rashi a minute. One minute. Yeah. Oh, right. So it's only a specific case. It's not a classic case. If you look at Rashi, the first narrow line, chatas nami, Rashi says, mosaru nidavahu kigon hifri shtei chatos lachrayus miskaper ba'achaz man. So this is a complicated case, which is, I know that I'm terrible at losing things, so when I go ahead and sanctify my animal as a chatos, what I actually say is, both of these sheep are a chatos. If I lose one, the other one will stand in place of it. That's hifri shtei chatos lachrayus. So since from the very outset, I've designated some type of a leftover one, if then the owner brings one and then the owner dies, the other one, which sort of was always a backup, that one can still be also like brought, you know, on the Mizbeach and so on, okay? So that's a very unusual type of a case. A classic chattas doesn't come after, doesn't come, you know, it's just let to die. So let's take a look. Chattas nami mikir mosara. No, chattas avakav de karvel mosara miyak rachmano hu. No, even though maybe there is some way in which a chatas in a very special case can come lachar misa, that we know from the who that a chatas is puzzle when it's shalom lishma. Okay, asham nami ksi. Okay, so basically what we've said now is, and now we're going to get to words of who and ahi, but the basic new point that we've made is to help you deal conceptually with this idea that an asham can come without an owner. Like, okay, we did it with all these psukim, fine. But what about the conceptual question of an asham app without an owner? Right? Where do we ever else have that? And the Gemara actually has now given a little bit of an answer to that. We have that idea because at the end, even when the owner dies, the Asham in a reincarnated form, at least as an Ola, is brought. 
So therefore, even though here the ashram itself is brought without an owner, it's not like it's completely unprecedented. Okay, so let's just now read a little bit more with the who and the hahu, because now we're saying the osal chatas or chatas he should be not who he tells me, you know, that oh, that a chatas, you know, let's end it. Okay, it's eight thirty, and uh, we'll have to still we, we're not still totally out of the woods about the psukim, but we get have uh, we've accomplished a lot. We know that you require lishma from shlamim. The svasach tells me everything requires lishma. And Mozart's Fasecha tells me, but if it's done incorrectly, it's kashav lo alu lebalim. That's not true by achatas. Achatas b'diev is not good because of the word of osa. Okay, how do we know that an asham, you know, b'diev, you know, you know, it can be in this middle state? So this pasuk, this middle state applies by like shlamim and ola, whatever. How do we know the middle state also applies to an asham? And that's the Zotatara. Zotatara, which equates things, say yes. Conceptually, Ashan maybe should not exist in a middle state. It should either be completely puzzle or completely kasher. But we link it to the other things and we say it can exist in a middle state. And at the, the Gemara ended by actually telling us a little bit of a svara that sometimes an Ashan can exist in a reincarnated Leilacha Misa. So that helps us understand why this halacha can apply to an Ashan as well, that it can have this middle state of being kasher and not Ola Lebaal. All right, we did a lot. We'll end here. <laughs>